A no commentary version of this run can be found in the pinned comment in the comments section below. Beast Coast is sponsored by this uh, this company, a company called Summa Forte, right? And they have this transdermal mentholated CBD tape. If my camera will focus, there we go. But yeah, basically I just like, I just like put it on like my wrists, my fingers, and yeah, it's like, it's like this, uh, this stuff, like it's a, uh, it's like a delivery system of CBD. Yeah, exactly, gamer tape. This video is intended as a game walkthrough. It is not a speedrun. All strategies in this video were made for efficiency and success rate. Please watch the entire video and listen carefully to the commentary before trying any of these strategies for yourself. everyone. This is a Chris Any% percent speedrun of Resident Evil HD Remaster in 1 hour 22 minutes and 38 seconds. There are only So the last time I did, last time I did this speed run was a really long time ago, and ever since it was discovered that 120 FPS was the optimal way to run Resident Evil HD Remaster, such that the timer actually ran correctly. I never actually bothered to like update any of my runs. I guess because at one point in time I was just so pressured to be like, hey, you gotta get world record in order for it to be worth it. But I just like never bothered to like finish runs or really just like upload anything. I don't know. But yeah, now that I just like feel absolutely no pressure to compete in speedruns anymore, there's nothing stopping me from just doing speedruns. So I'm just gonna do that. And let's see. It might take a, uh, take a couple of minutes to actually figure out what my old PB was. If I look on old speedrun.com over here. So coming up on the murder hall, we're just going to squeeze right by this guy, and then we're going to approach the arrow perpendicular to the statue, run toward the zombie around the corner, bait to the right, and then just dodge out of the way. Yeah, my previous PB was an hour 24 minutes and 29 seconds. So this is a, uh, this is a pretty square improvement of almost like two minutes. It was pretty good. I don't necessarily know if it was like better than my previous run or anything like that, but I completed this run, what, two years ago? Something like that. So we gotta squeeze by this one and then hug the uh, right hand side of the pathway leading to the crypt. Because doing so will keep you far enough so that you're out of range of the fat zombies line of sight and depending on uh, the starting position of the uh, first zombie and how quickly it uh, how quickly it turns so like depending on that is uh, going to determine where the zombie is going to be whenever you exit the crypt over here and uh, fortunately I lucked out and he hit a wall So I was just able to get out of here without getting hit, which is pretty nice. Pretty decent. I 
pick up the handgun on the way down because we're actually facing it this time. Also puts it in a pretty good slot. Don't necessarily know if it's like faster to pick up the handgun first or what. I don't really think it is though. I don't think it even really matters that much when you pick up the handgun. So because Chris gets small keys, he has to use small keys because he doesn't get a lockpick. You gotta take a visit to the bathroom over here first, grab the small key, exit, and then go directly to the right path. I don't think I've actually done a run of Chris with door skip yet, though. I think, like, maybe one of my goals for this game should be to just, like, speedrun every single category on the speedrun.com leaderboard and just get a time up. I think that's probably a good baseline. I think because I haven't, like, actively speedrun this game in, like, so many years, the chances of actually getting, like, a world record in any category are, like, slim to, like, not at all. And before you say, well, Corsi, you can do it. That's what you want. It's not what I want. World records cost time. And the kind of time that I would need to put into it to get a world record is time that I could be spending making a lot more videos. We gotta duck into the save room, squeeze past the zombie in order to get the uh, small key over here, which we need in order to get to the dog terrace. Sometimes that zombie can rotate a little fast in a clockwise fashion. And if it does that, then it'll actually grab you before you even have a chance to get out of the way. I usually like to uh, stop as soon as that camera angle in the middle of the in the middle of the U shape is triggered, so that, that way I can check the position of the zombie. The optimal thing would just be to like hug the interior wall and hope and pray that you just squeeze right by the zombie. But I'm never sure whether that zombie is going to rotate left, right, how quickly, how slowly it's going to rotate while it's moving. But I can say that. A good 99% of the time, that zombie is going to be moving as soon as you enter the room. Some zombies are just like asleep whenever you enter a room. Other times, they're just programmed to just be moving. But yeah, that's usually why I like to pick up the handgun right about there. So what I'm trying to do is uh, trying to shoot that dog in such a way that I can actually like uh, parry his attacks with my gunshots. That's about the only way to reliably avoid damage is to just dodge and try to parry the attacks. But sometimes whenever it throws its head up, if it throws its head up and you shoot the dog in order to cancel it out, its next attack, if it's facing directly at Chris is always going to be like a knockdown grab. And if it hits you with the knockdown grab, you can counter with a knife, but... Because I tend to aim for consistency in these runs, like, really I just want to... I just want runs that are more consistent than are, than are about, like, crazy risky or, like, fast strats. Which is kind of one of the reasons why I just, like, kind of stopped speedrunning for the most part and did, like, no damage runs. It's just because I like this the consistency... You know, just like the feeling of, haha, I just own the ever-loving shit out of the video game. Whereas with speedruns, it's like sometimes you have to get lucky or, you know... 
such as like the do the dodge after the dog, you know, sometimes that zombie will grab you, sometimes it won't. I've actually pretty f thoroughly failed to find a uh, very consistent strat for that. So that fat zombie there, sometimes it can just be wandering in the middle of the hallway. I think it changes its initial position because the uh, crimson head there is uh, active. Or maybe it could just be because I came in from the uh, from the armor room. In any case, that particular zombie is what I like to save the uh, the knife for, or the the dagger counterattack is what I like to save that for. Is specifically dealing with uh, dealing with that zombie, so that that way I keep my health. Basically, every every uh, every every resource de decision that I made up to that point in this run was specifically so I didn't have to use a first aid spray, and so that I could maintain my health. By the way, uh, cornerstone of a lot of Resident Evil speedruns is you have to not fail so many dodges because if you do, then Whenever you take damage, you lose foot speed, so if you fall below uh, yellow caution, if you fall below yellow caution, then, you know, you start limping, and limping means you compound your time loss, so it just gets worse and worse and worse. After we get the armor key, there's a zombie that uh, comes in from, like, the dog terrace. And as soon as we trigger this camera angle, the zombie will just like pop in no matter what. On the stairs though, we can just uh, keep mashing the B button and just like dodge around it. On the box, I just hit XL1, XL1, X in order to drop the, uh, the knife and the sword key. I usually just hit the wall whenever I uh, whenever I dodge that zombie so that that way I can trigger the camera angle and like figure out where the zombie is before I have to, before I have to dodge it I do think that zombie is a bit is a bit annoying you have to be a bit lucky to get around that one way out of here, Chris needs another small key. So we gotta go this way. Unfortunately, that zombie did not uh, lunge forward. He usually does lunge forward whenever we like move forward a little bit, and he just decided to like chase to the side. So I got grabbed. Fortunately, it was a front grab, so I was able to counter with a dagger. So I pretty commonly get questions about like basic advice for speedrunning Resident Evil. And my basic advice for speedrunning Resident Evil is specifically practice the boss strategies. And by practice the boss strategies, I mean don't just like randomly pick up ammo. Pick up only the ammo that the speedrun route does. Practice the bosses and just take hits from enemies if you fail to dodge. 
because if you come up with an overabundance of ammo in your inventory, then you have to keep shooting in order to be able to get it out of your inventory. And more ammo in your inventory means more visits to the item box. Yeah, that zombie is straight up troll. He'll just he'll just he'll just go any direction. And like trying to uh When he gets in the middle like that, about your only choice is to either try to squeeze between him and the guardrail, or try to bait out a lunge. Sometimes baiting out a lunge just doesn't work out. Because Richard is now in the infirmary, there's a zombie in this hallway. This zombie just failed to react and just like went on a set path. So if it fails to lunge at you, really all you can do is just get out of the way until the zombie gets out of the way. This also starts with a lighter, so we don't gotta pick it up in the library either. It's a bit of an unfortunate squeeze around for the for the fat zombie there. But I didn't get hit, so that's all I care that's all I care about. So in case you're not familiar with that from watching other Resident Evil HD Remaster speedruns, the thing that I'm doing up and down the stairs is called stair skating. It's not buggy movement or anything, literally all I am doing is mashing the run button on the stairs, and it allows me to travel up and down the stairs faster. Bakarsi, stop it, it looks annoying. No, fuck off, it's not like I'm skipping any compelling gameplay by doing that. On the way back to the main hall for this zombie, all we gotta do is just hug the left-hand wall, because he's going to be asleep. In order to get Rebecca to be done playing the piano, we have to exit the main hall and re-enter. And because we have the inventory slot free now, we can grab the emblem. About the only way to get around that zombie also is to bait out a lunge. Uh, another question that I might get, and also something that's uh, different from the last time that I did speedruns on this game, if any of you are familiar with the videos that I uploaded to my other channel, is what control scheme do I use? Do I use original or do I use alternate? And the answer is alternate. 
but alternate does not work the way you think it does because it doesn't change d-pad being tank controls all it changes is the way the analog stick works not the d-pad no matter which control selection you choose your d-pad is always tank controls So alternate really changes the stick and means that I can just press a direction on the stick and move in that direction. But you actually need both D-pad and stick. You need tank controls and alternate controls, which you can only do by selecting the alternate control scheme in order to be able to have optimal movement in the game. Of course, my movement is uh, anything but optimal. But at least generally, whenever I'm like moving in a straight line or moving in like general directions, it's it's fine. About the only thing that I really mess up on is like enemy dodges. I haven't actually like relearned any of the enemy dodges because I'd been speedrunning this game since like GameCube. And then I had to relearn all the dodges for when I thought tank controls were best in HD remaster and I didn't even know that the alternate controls were only changed by the stick and not by the D-pad. But yes, you can use tank and alternate on the same control scheme. You just select alternate. Try it, try it yourself. Yawn is super easy to get around. All you have to do is grab the death mask. Just hold up left on the stick, grab the death mask, and hold down and left on the stick. You can squeeze right past it. Try to trigger that camera angle so that uh, we can check the position of the zombie before we get around it, but nine times out of ten, you're able to just uh, squeeze past the zombie. You're able to squeeze past the zombie as long as... as long as you uh, take a tight enough turn. But because I just generally hate resetting, because we're already at uh, yellow caution at this point in the run, I decided to stop and check. I was being extra cautious, all in favor of uh, keeping the run going. Now that we have the last death mask, we can just skate our way down to the basement. Oh yeah, by the way, if you used the uh, flash grenade up to this point, you have failed. Because you were supposed to save the flash grenade in a normal mode speedrun for this very fight.
so I have a little trick to uh, getting the Elder Crimson Head to consistently grab you so that you can use the defense item. Which I discovered when I was doing a uh, knife only no damage run, or a melee only no damage run of this game. But usually what I do is I just start by running directly towards the Crimson Head, and if he winds up a slash, then I just simply... I just simply, uh... I just simply run behind him. But, uh, I got lucky and he just grabbed me immediately, so... Also, I forgot to equip my handgun here. I could have saved another, like, five seconds or so if I'd actually remembered to equip my handgun when I was putting down the last death mask. That zombie, usually, whenever you just, like, run straight for it, you can just, like, dodge backwards and then run around him. But because he didn't lunge immediately, I just ran for the corner. As far as the speedrun's concerned, there's not a whole lot going on in this area. Just gotta make sure that we pick up the first aid spray and a defense item. Usually I just like to keep one defense item. I think like one of the main things that actually like eats up the most time in a speedrun is just simply getting grabbed by zombies. Because you always lose like... I don't know, seven seconds or something like that? You'll generally lose more time if you actually take damage from said bite. At 120 FPS, you want to walk one step and then hold the run button after walking one step. And then just like kind of try to squeeze between yourself, between Lisa and the fireplace. You also got to watch out for that zombie on the way out. If you know what you're looking for, it's kind of a second nature, but you still got to watch out for it.
We can just run past the dog right there. Just kind of stay towards the dog's right. Yeah, the first room with the dogs, there's, uh, there's, like, several lines you can run where the dogs just, like, won't hit you. They're pretty consistent. There's crows here. We don't got to worry about them. Just run, go. Got to grab the shotgun shells on the table here and the book. And then on the way back, we just got to take as tight a line as we possibly can in order to avoid getting hit from the spider. Very, very rarely, sometimes that spider will actually... Uh, like the spider will actually uh, spit acid at you and there is a chance of that poisoning you as well. Plant 42 tentacle causes very, very little damage, but uh, there's always like some variance in the amount of damage the Plant 42 tentacle causes. Generally, the best place to use your first aid spray is after the shark tank, or just like not at all. That zombie right there, uh, just try to squeeze around him best you can. But he generally rotates counterclockwise, which makes dodging around him kind of easy. Uh, that weird bookshelf push that I did, where I just like kind of rotated into it and pushed it from the corner like that, is something you can only do on the PC version at 120 FPS. By the way, as far as like console versus uh, PC, console is actually going to have like a completely different set. Well, I should say PS4 and Xbox One and PS3 and 360 are going to have a different set of dodges 
than the uh, than the uh, PC version at like 60 or 120 FPS. So your frame rate actually very heavily influences the dodges that you can and cannot do. As far as any of those matter, it's completely different routes. easiest way to actually avoid damage while uh, getting away from the sharks is to uh, run down the center of the path and it just like kind of tricks out the sharks a little bit because I think their pathing is very heavily influenced by the room. It's also like the only room where you actually like are forced to encounter sharks. But the way they behave in the randomizer, I don't know. Emergency. Unknown source of pressure detected. Locking all doors to achieve maximum safety. So to fucking do this puzzle, we uh, hit the... Hit the one button at the top, then go right, then go left, then check the number. It was number three this time. Run around and we hit this button on the right and this button on the left. We'll pull the lever, I should say. And then we hit the button to drain the water. Oh, yeah, another thing, too. Carsey, why are you playing the game in Japanese? It's a speedrun. So the text scrolls really quickly. I could play with Chinese text and have it scroll even faster. But... I don't know. I just... I just... I just like it, man. Leave me alone. Because we saved Richard... The shotgun is uh, down here, next to the shark. No, it's all good, I used... Alright. So in order to get past the shark over here, we just drop into the water, and I use tank controls. I can hold up and left as soon as I drop into the water. That pretty much guarantees that you'll dodge around the shark. It's actually a lot easier than it looks, but of course I'd recommend practicing it a few times to do the shark skip. back around, this zombie is like nigh impossible to dodge, which is pretty much exactly the reason why I just keep a defense item on me, so that I can actually save health for whenever I'm uh, dodging hunters or something. It would certainly be faster to just take the bite, but... 
I don't know. I'm probably never going to break out of that. But that's okay. Let's just put it this way. The things that I make time sacrifices for so that I can get through them more consistently... The reason why I make those sacrifices is so that I can actually get to the later parts of the game and be able to practice what I like to call the back nine of the game. I call it the back nine because playing a game of golf, if you only play through the first nine holes and you only practice the first nine holes, then how are you going to know how to play the back nine? How are you going to practice the back nine when those come around? On this screen, we're going to want to equip the shotgun before we use the uh, before we use the book. And uh, yeah, okay, my stream's banned from YouTube. I'm just completely banned from YouTube now. At 120 FPS, this is what I do. I just uh, go to this corner, and I turn around, and I just aim up and start firing. And I just listen for the audio cue. That audio cue. You can hear the uh, pedals opening and closing. Depending on your frame rate, Plant 42 is going to spit acid in different directions. But by sitting here... I found that this is generally the luckiest spot to be able to deliver a constant stream of DPS and still not get hit by Plant 42. The closer you are to Plant 42, the easier it will be to kill him. Like, the quicker it'll be to kill him. You'll actually save a little bit of ammo, but... That just makes the fight extremely random. And I would have to reset the game a bunch. And whenever I'm playing without door skip... You know, I generally have less patience whenever I'm playing without door skip. But they're separate leaderboards anyway, so whatever. So this one is uh, kind of tough. These snakes here actually have a pretty high chance of uh, poisoning you. But uh, as long as you move in the line that I just moved in, and specifically the line that I just moved in, you know, you can, you can uh, back up the video by using the J key a couple of times, and then putting the video in slow-mo to see how I do it. But yeah, over here, we just got to run to the right, get around that dog.
ran a little fast that time, but actually this was like it was before I started doing safety strats for this room and safety strats only. I'd say this is about so-so hunter dodge. But uh Yeah, no, you have to kind of get lucky, kind of get lucky dodging around those hunters like that. As long as you don't fuck around in this area and you don't hit any walls, you can just hug around the outside and just not get hit by that spider. I use D-pad for that room. Coming around here, we're just going to uh, D-pad down to the water and I got bit by the zombie. I absolutely despise that zombie. What's funny though is grabbing that dagger actually makes the zombie dodging in this area a lot more consistent. But from the looks of this, I was also trying to avoid picking up a lot of uh, defense daggers. As long as you hug the same wall every time, dodge that zombie, because it's not going to be facing you. It'll it'll pretty much be forced to uh, spin around. I decided not to uh, pop that first aid spray quite so soon, because I wanted to save it for the murder hall. Of course, this guy decided not to lunge, so pretty much forced to take a bite. Got about two hits left before death. Somehow I just got really lucky dodging around that crimson head. The reverse murder hall is pretty awful. But nowadays, what I do whenever I do speedruns is I just go ahead and shoot them. Because you get a little bit of extra ammo in the room with the battery, so it's like, why not? After shot number three is when you want to be headed directly to the right. Also, I somehow messed that up. I have no idea how or why I mess I messed that up. I think I might have just shot one extra shotgun shell than I was supposed to. But anyhow. Yeah, one thing that uh, Chris cannot do that Jill can is fire from the hip whenever there's a boss. 
Jill can pump cancel against bosses. Chris can't. Because whenever Chris fights a boss, he always raises the shotgun to his shoulder. And in order to pump cancel, you have to raise the shotgun to your shoulder. Crimson head to one side, fat zombie to the other, you can just squeeze in between them. The zombies down here are replaced by a hunter jump scare, so you can just run directly to the save room here. You're absolutely forced to visit a save room before uh, going up to grab the red jewel to be able to get the uh, Spencer key. So what I do is drop off the two Doom books. Because this is a bad ending run, we're not going to get the uh, yellow gem. I'm just going to push that once, go down, around, up and left. Probably save like half a second if I just like took a straighter line, but I didn't want to do that because I would have just reset the run if I lost that whole 15-20 seconds there. As long as you're running directly behind a sleeping hunter, and when I say sleeping, I mean it's just like not even moving, you don't hear it like moving or creeping around or anything like that. Then the hunter will just like screech and turn around. A lot of times, a lot of times, you know, if you can take advantage of like the hunters screeching, like doing their like screeching animation, where they try to look all intimidating and shit. Then, usually you can just run right by them. I usually like to pump the run button just to kind of give that zombie some space to move around, but fortunately I was a little too close that time and I didn't grab the uh, item box correctly. If I'd grabbed the item box a little quicker, instead of, uh, instead of messing up my direction, then I probably could squeeze between the zombie and the shelf there. But I didn't, so I had to take the long way out of the room. Uh, that hunter right there is just going to screech at us, and because of how close we are, we can just squeeze directly to the left. There is a very, very, very low, like, 1% chance of getting hit by that hunter. Because the dog wasn't under the gazebo that time, I squeezed in between the column and the dog that time. The snakes are still here, so we gotta squeeze. The path over here. The snake lunged, but fortunately it didn't hit me. Because there's dogs here this time. 
<sighs> you just gotta be mindful of what direction the dogs are facing. Whether they can just, like, launch at us, attack us. Now, if you're, like, running past dogs and, like, dodging, the fact that they just have, like, a... They just have, like, a, a bullet dive attack where they can just, like, kind of hit you whenever they feel like it. It's pretty BS. I think that the dogs are actually worse than the hunters in this game, truth be told. Truth be told about my feelings, I should say. I gotta be careful with weasel words like that. Positing opinion is reality. up. Squeeze around. Unfortunately, we weren't able to avoid getting back grabbed by that dog right there, but because half of these attacks from these dogs are not defensible from defense items anyway, that's why I got a first aid spray budgeted. What's interesting about the way these hunters are positioned is you can run the same line every time and the hunters will never hit you. Also, a little known fun fact, the solution to this puzzle is the same every time. The only difference is the direction you push the stick, but you press the R and L buttons the same number of times. pieces are always, like, ejected in, like, the same positions. So believe it or not, that puzzle doesn't even really have, like, any randomness, aside from the direction you push the stick. Getting around Black Tiger. Black Tiger is a massive piece of shit. I usually just uh, hold directly right as soon as we take control of Chris. That way we can just kind of get around. Oh man, some interesting stuff happened there. So. After we got knocked over by Black Tiger, uh, <laughs> Black Tiger was about to follow up with uh, Poison, and I would actually have not been able to dodge that, so about the only option that I had was to actually like use the flamethrower and hope I killed him before he uh, followed up with Poison. And also on top of that, while the uh, 
while the other spider was uh, was uh, was falling down, I was able to uh, I was able to stun loop it while it was falling upside down, which is a uh, dude. I really don't want to say it because. Spiders or arachnids, but a bug. <laughs> That's about this is about the only way I can describe what happened there. But in any case, yeah, when Black Tiger uh, physically knocks you over, like with a forward tackle, it always, 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 always follows up with an acid spit. And sometimes you're just in a position where you can't dodge it. Pretty massive damage. I don't know. Pretty terrible boss. I also solved this puzzle the very, very slow way. But this run was also completed in, like, what, 2018? I just never uploaded it because I've been trying to think for a while on what kind of policy I wanted to be able to maintain variety in speed games and also not dedicate too much time on one speed game. way back, a hunter populates this room. We also don't need to pick up the flamethrower and put it back down in order to exit this area. The mere condition for leaving this area seems to be do not carry a flamethrower in our inventory. This should also be the last time that we use the item box. We just swap out the two cranks since they're now useless. And, uh, we just swap in for the books. we come down here, Lisa can be manipulated to appear wherever you want, just depends on which camera angle you trigger first. And because we are running a direct path, it means that Lisa is always going to be directly in our way. I could have sacrificed like three seconds to just like trigger a camera angle trigger another camera angle before that camera angle so that we wouldn't have to dodge her, but...
That dodge over there, you kind of have to get mad lucky to get her to commit to that direction. But it could just be as simple as... It's just like running a specific line when running around her. I don't know. I haven't practiced it. Yeah, it's one of the fun things about rewatching old speedruns. It's just like sometimes you see where you can improve on and Sometimes you even think about ways that you can improve that you just that are just like not apparent while you're like holding on to the controller and just like playing, you know? You don't just get to like really look and notice look at and notice like your habits and whatnot while you play the game. Sometimes I wish I could commit to just, like, one speed game and just, like, grind it all the way out, but I don't think I really want to do that. right there. We don't got to worry about them. They're never going to hit us. Generally not even going to have to worry about anything getting directly in our way for a while. Again, we gotta watch out for this one zombie over here, though. One other rule of thumb for uh, speedrunning Chris any percent is if you're going to pick up shotgun shells, try not to do it in a place where Chris has to like bend down to pick them up. Because if you do, that's like an extra animation that costs about two seconds every time Chris bends down, and well, like a second and a half every time Chris bends down, and another second and a half every time Chris gets back up and you resume control of the character. I tried to grab that grenade there, but for some reason, Chris was angled like one pixel closer to the door.
as you saw, Lisa can be kind of a troll there sometimes. I was trying to push down that second rock, but for some reason, she just like kept camping it. Sometimes Lisa can actually knock down rocks for you if you lure her to attack in the direction of said rock. But I think she has to hit it from like a specific angle for it to work. the HD remaster sometimes the uh, certain music tracks are just like sped up for just like no reason sometimes you're able to take the shortest line around that first zombie other times you have to actually bait out a grab in order to get around it the zombie over here is what I usually like to have a grenade for but because I don't have a grenade I decided to just go ahead and decapitate it but it was also the first zombie that I decapitated this run, so that meant that the shotgun had a 100% chance of decapitating. Little known fun fact, it is actually possible to manipulate a singular headshot on a zombie. But only the very first headshot on a zombie. It was actually Matt DeRock who discovered that. Shoutouts to Matt. Going to uh, stair skate up. We can almost always squeeze in between the wall and that zombie right there. Fucked up a little bit on inputting the code 8462, but it's okay. There's also some shotgun shells right there, which I tried to grab but just didn't. I think it might be actually like, I don't, I don't remember if those shells were in the original GameCube version or if those were added to the HD remaster. I do intend to play the uh, GameCube version again someday, but I've only played the GameCube version a grand total of once since the HD remaster came out, just because you know, this is definitely a far superior version of the game. Proved on in every way, so why not play that version? But I mean, the GameCube Wii version has like its own challenge, just simply because the dodging is so different and alternate controls do not exist. Got pretty lucky moving past that Chimera. We'll see how lucky I am on the way back.
surely very, very annoying. But yeah, you can usually, like, uh... Get rid of some knees on some zombies. I don't think you can actually, like, dismember the naked zombies here. By the way, the number of steps you've run with the canister do carry on, do carry over from room to room. In the GameCube and Wii versions, they would actually, like, reset between rooms, but you have to actually count, like, the number of steps you've walked and run so that you don't, like, run too many steps. But it's generally pretty safe to do like do like two and a half steps walking and four steps running on normal difficulty. On the harder difficulties, I usually just do three and uh, I just do like three and three, three steps walking, three steps running. I usually like to walk on the way up to that chimera so that that way I am free to run whenever I have to dodge. If you're carrying the canister and keeping that one alive, it's generally safer. Also another question asked from someone in chat, do enemy placements reset when you leave a room? Yes, they do. But it depends on the enemy placement. If it's like a jump scare or something like that, then the enemy finds like a new place to reset. It won't reset from the jump scare. Yeah, by the way, I would never recommend playing this game on mouse and keyboard. Unless you only want to do tank controls, ever. There is I grab the key and then equip the shotgun and then we auto aim on the way back around. It takes about nine shells to do the deed. You just like never want to play this game with keyboard and mouse because the inability to use analog controls, the alternate controls, like the inability to switch in between analog and uh, tank on the fly just kind of sucks. That's pretty much it. There's, uh, really nothing left to this run. Aside from this last zombie dodge. Last two zombie dodges. You do kind of have to improvise a little bit on these two zombies over here.
But anyways, thank you all very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I have a bunch of other speedruns and challenge runs on my YouTube channel. Go check them out. I also record all these live on my Twitch stream at twitch.tv slash carcinogensda. Say hi, chat. Also, if you want to support my bad challenge run habit, you can do so on my Patreon, which is really just a glorified tip jar at patreon.com slash carcinogensda. So thank you all for watching, and see you next speedrun. Chris, you did a fine job. Final time, one hour, 22 minutes, 38 seconds. Three healing items used. Thanks for watching.